resident curmudgeon, I think. Is the great <laughs> uh, I'm really depressed, though, this evening as I come before you because as a former undergraduate at Johns Hopkins, we were eliminated from the lacrosse championship this oh, afternoon, no. which was, uh, so I'm grieving about that. But uh, I'm delighted to be here with all of you to celebrate uh, what's an auspicious occasion in your, in your lives. I'm reminded of, of something that uh, Mayor Bloomberg, who is one of the great benefactors of Johns Hopkins University, was asked what he might recommend the university could do to, to recognize the service that he'd given to the university and the incredible amounts of money that he'd given to the university. And he suggested that they might want to give two, put up two statues. One would be a statue to himself, obviously, because he was the most uh, munificent uh, benefactor of the university had ever had ever seen. The second, he said, should be to the admissions officer who let me into the university <laughs> because he felt he never would have really qualified had he not been given some sort of special attention. So I, I share with that. I'm, I'm very grateful to the admissions officer, whoever it was, who let me in to the class of 1951. And uh, I learned a great deal while I was here. And I've been, you know, it's now 65 years later, and I'm still learning things here at Johns Hopkins University, which I think is really quite remarkable. For example, uh, this semester, I learned that the effective oversight of the U.S. intelligence community is really being potentially jeopardized because the intelligence committees of the, of the House and the Senate are becoming increasingly, or at least uh, potentially increasingly partisan, which is going to make their work much more suspect and much more uh, questionable. So that is a, a, something of real concern, and I had never really understood that until I read the paper that produced that uh, this semester. The other thing I learned was that there are work on thousands of infrastructure projects that uh, are going to come to a screeching halt this summer unless Congress somehow figures out how to fund them before the Highway Trust Fund runs out of money in mid-August. So if you suddenly find potholes everywhere, and you're driving around the country in mid-August, you may want to read this paper because he points to the problem and what needs to be done to correct it. But I learned the most, I think, this semester while reading a thesis about how the social media is really revolutionizing the political elections, political fundraising, and political communication in ways not even dreamed of 15, as recently as 15 years ago. Like most people in, uh, in my demographic group, which by the way, the technical word for which is old fogies, <laughs> uh, I do not know the difference, Ben would refer to the word Twitter, I don't know the difference between a Twitter and a Twinkie, <laughs> and uh, for me, going viral has something to do with plagues and pestilence. <laughs> uh, oh sure, I, even I know the digital age with cameras running amok everywhere we live, uh, congresspersons should be aware who they are kissing in their offices after hours. <laughs> <laughs> and threatening to throw a reporter who is bugging you off a balcony is not a good career move. <laughs> but I was unaware of how dramatically the eruption of social media has changed and is continuing to change the political landscape forever. Kenny Ames has produced a meticulously researched, powerfully argued, and well-written portfolio, which is a really must-read for anyone who cares about the direction and power and future of politics in America. The first paper he wrote deals with the Obama campaigns and how the Obama campaigns were able to amass the largest and most effective force of donors and volunteers in history, and which would never have been possible without social media. The bottom line is that had, we, had he not had been able to marshal those <coughs> forces, Hillary Clinton would probably be the President of the United States as we speak. But he was able to do that, and as a result, uh, he has been served two terms as President of the United States. The second paper describes how social media facilitates communication between elected representatives and their constituents, where it really <coughs> counts. When matters are really under consideration in the House of Representatives, when your input can really make a difference, uh, that is what social media now enables uh, people to do. And the third paper explores how advocacy groups are using
using social media to sharpen and target their messages in a more timely and effective way. All in all, a first-class piece of scholarly work. Bob Gutman, who has also read this portfolio uh, with me, uh, said that it is the best he has read in the eight years he's been reading them. I would agree with that, and therefore I'm very proud to be able to present this year's Klinger Prize to Kenny Ames.